Hello everyone and welcome to the second part in our functions tutorial. In the last video we went over essentially functions and their return types and how they function. Now we're going to go over parameters and how we can use parameters in our functions um, to make them significantly more useful. So let's go ahead and jump in. We have my function with zero parameters. What if we wanted to get our index from main? And then we wanted to get the new value um, from our function. So what we could do is um, we could do this. Let's say um, int index equal equals zero. All right, index equals zero. Now, what if, let's take out the, uh, uh, the other variable as well. What if we added index as a parameter? So here we go, index. Now what happens? Well, we get an error. No overload method. My function takes one argument. So the arguments in this case is the parameters. So let's take a look. We go to the function, into my function, doesn't have any parameters. So we can make parameters. We're going to essentially declare a variable inside of the parameters. So int my index. And there we go. So whatever the value is that is being passed in, that is going to be the value of this variable. Now this variable is going to be used, it can be used inside of only this function. So then we have my index, some um, logic is ran on my index, and then we return my index. So let's take a look. So we can actually say that um, int new index equals this. And then we can say new index. All right, so let's actually, let's do 30, 32. Okay, so we have a variable index, it equals 32, and then we have our function, which runs logic on our parameter. And in this case, we're passing index as the parameter, so the value for index is going to show up here. So then we can work with this value inside of our function. So whatever is passed in these parameters, we can use. So my index, now the value for my index is going to um, be added and equal to five, or it's going to equal um, itself plus five. So in this case, it'll be 37, and then it'll return that value. And then we can assign a new variable to that value, and then we're going to take a look at it here. All right, so let's see, let's actually see all of this in action. So we're going to put a line of a, a breakpoint on every line that actually runs something. So let's see this. All right, so we are declaring and initializing the variable. We are now setting, if you see, it's now setting the, um, um, excuse me, it's initializing new index to be whatever my function is. So it hits this and says, oh, oh wait a minute, it needs to actually run this function in order to get a value because right now new index doesn't equal anything, it's just null. So now we're going to actually jump into the function. So we're hitting the breakpoint inside the function. My index, so let's actually see. So we have index right here equals 32. Let's see what my index equals. We can hover it and as you see, it equals 32 because of the parameter that we passed. And now we're going to run some logic 
on that value. And then it's going to return 37. There we go. And we keep running it. And we are going to output um, this is the number from our function. And we can hover my index or new index to see the new number. All right, and let's press play one more time to see the function actually finish. Yep, 37. This is the number from our function, 37. All right, so you can do this again. You can do this with uh, any data type. And um, so it's the same thing with um, the return type. You can use this as a string, a Boolean, a double, whatever. Um, the important thing is to remember, though, that if this is, this specifies what the return type will be. And it has to be um, something or else if there's no return type, then it will just be void. So you can still run logic in a void function. You just cannot assign um, any value or any variable to be um, the return type of your function because it won't return anything if it's void. So anyways, um, that is how you pass parameters in a function in C sharp and how you can use those parameters to run more logic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions about functions. I think that should do it for our basic functions uh, tutorials. So let me know again if you have any questions. Um, let me know in the comments or um, with my contact information and in the next video, we're going to start going over classes and how they work. And we'll actually cover the static keyword as well. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.